there. Welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with another Pen Resurrection Sunday video. Last week I erased Elizabeth Lytton from a Parker 51 Demi. Sorry, Liz. This week I expunged Shirley Cantrell from this 1946 Parker Vacuumatic in Silver Pearl. I think the ghost of Shirley came back to haunt me because the pen resurrection from the dead was going very nicely. The vac pump came out without any difficulties, the section unscrewed without any heat, and the nib seemed to be in great shape. Then I removed Shirley and the problem started to mount. Shirley, you can't be serious. Shirley, you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. I even had to resort to swapping some of Shirley's parts with other dead pens. I ended up with a unique Parker Vacuumatic that I'm calling Frank and Shirley. So come with me to the slab in the lab. Come up to the lab and see what's on the slab. Right now. <laughs> Knowing what I know now about this pen, I can speculate on what happened to it before I bought it on eBay. I bought it partly because it had a name engraved into the barrel, and I've been wanting to practice my skills at removing engravings. But after having dissected the pen, I've discovered evidence of previous attempts at restoration. The first clue was the date on the nib. It's the second quarter of 1944, where the barrel imprint here says 1946. While a mismatch in dates between the nib and the barrel is possible, owing to Parker using up new old stock nibs, a mismatch of two years is a bit suspect. I believe this is not the original nib that was installed when the pen was new. When I removed the latex diaphragm from the vac pump, it was still relatively rubbery and flexible. If it was 77 years old, I doubt it would still be flexible. And the biggest tell that this pen had been disassembled and poorly is this misshapen section. Not only were there deep grooves in the section from some kind of pliers being applied to it, the entire section was melted out of shape and resembles more of an oval than a circle. Even with these issues, restoring the vacuumatic pump, removing the section, feed and nib, and removing Shirley's name from the barrel was fairly straightforward. And that's when Shirley decided to haunt the cap. I tried every technique I know to get the top jewel off and remove the clip so I could polish the cap to no avail. Shirley had a death grip on the clip. The death grip clip. What did you do? I instinctively used the Vulcan death grip. I couldn't remove it. And between soaking it in pen flush and adding my pen potion number seven to try to get it to give up the ghost, the top jewel changed color from black to silver in a really spooky way. The clip also went from a darker tarnished silver to a bright, almost white silver without any polishing at all. I thought perhaps the silver of the clip had transferred to the black jewel, but the more I polished the top jewel, the brighter and shinier silver it became. It was eerie, I tells you. It's like all the blood drained out of it. And that led to my speculation that this was a replacement top jewel and it was cross-threaded when it was reinstalled. Fortunately, it holds the clip tight enough that it doesn't spin around, and I really like the ghostly silver look. Once I got the pen writing, I decided to make a parts change from another dead vacuumatic that I'll show later after I've shown you the restoration process. So here's today's pen on a slab. This is a 1946. There's the imprint there, 1946, that little six on the end. Parker Vacuumatic Silver Pearl, and it's in pretty rough shape. The cap is all stained with ink, some corrosion on that silver clip, and there is a name engraved deeply into the barrel that I'm going to remove. And I've taken the nib off at this point because I knocked that feed out of there. But the section's in really poor shape. There's some gouges in it. And here's the nib that I've pulled out of it. It says 1944 on it. And it looks like a fine, and it looks like it's in really good shape. And there's no sack inside that barrel. The section comes off easily. Breather tube, but I looked inside there, and there is no sack. So we're going to take that filling system off of there. We're going to try to polish it up. 
and get it writing again. I'm going to use my Parker Vac Extractor from the Inky Nib to remove that vacuumatic. We take the collet out, screw it on the back of the pen. I've already applied some heat to get this to budge. Tighten it down. Now I've already soaked this a bit in some pen flush and applied some heat as well so I got it to budge. Put some gripping material on there and give it a turn. It's still rather tight. There we go. So it's still stuck in there so I've got to put this back on just a little bit. Release the collet. And then we got to push that unit out of the bottom of the barrel. Push a rod down inside there. It feels like there's remnants of sack there too. There we go. There's the the old sack. Not too not too bad shape, but it's uh, it was not sucking up ink in any event. That unit seems to be working okay. So I'm going to use my Dremel tool to drill that little pellet out of that cup. There, now that uh, pellet is out of the cup. And the trick with do using that Dremel is to not Dremel all the way down so that you're going to destroy the attachment between that cup and that plastic rod. But just about halfway down through the pellet and then dig it out with a dental tool. So now I'll put the pump mechanism back into the barrel uh, so that I can put the blind cap back on for when I'm going to polish the whole thing as a unit. So I'm going to go all the way around that barrel with 400 grit sandpaper and we'll get that Shirley Crantrell off there and I'm going to avoid the imprint. Well, that makes it come up very nicely, doesn't it? And we're starting to get down to the meat of it as it's coming off. And there we go. The imprint is still there, nice and clear, but the signature is completely gone. So the cap. There's always something on a pen that gives you trouble. Getting the pump out of this one was very easy. Getting the section off polishing the feed and polishing that section. So I actually polished up this section very nicely considering how gouged it was. And the nib came up beautifully. I thought this is going to be a breeze and the clip won't come off. I've tried everything. And in all my polishing and cleaning and putting my pen potion number seven on it to get it off, I couldn't get it off. And the top finial jewel has gone silver, and I quite like that. So it actually looks very nice. And here it is, all polished up. No engraving. Sorry, Shirley. Shirley, you can't be serious. Shirley, you cannot be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Airplane. try to put the nib back on. Well, I got the nib back in the section again. It was quite a job to get it in there because that nib is misshapen, as you can see. It was not only gouged very severely, I smoothed it out quite a bit. There's still a little bit of a gouge under there, and that feed is round, and the section is misshapen because someone applied heat to it. and. Uh, I've got it roughly cylindrical, uh, but the feed still didn't really want to fit down inside that oval hole. So it's in there as deep as it will go. And we put it on the barrel. I've dipped the nib in ink and I got it writing very, very nicely. It's very fine and quite flexible, as you can see. So the next step is to replace that sack in that vacuumatic pump. So I get out my vacuumatic pump extractor 
from the inky nib put that collet on the unit i've already had this out and i greased it up a little bit to make it travel in the barrel there and that's doing it very smoothly now i put a little bit of silicone oil on that there we go i've got to my standard sack or diaphragm and I get out my new pellet pusher from the inky nib the pellet pusher plus and we put it there into the pellet and there is a mark an indentation right there on the end of the pellet pusher to indicate where I cut this sack got my pen BBS exacto blade and feel for that mark there it is and just roll it around couldn't be simpler look at that okay so i didn't cut it all the way there we go now i leave this uh, pump unit inside the collet from the nibbit from the vacuumatic pump extractor it gives it a nice thing to hold on to there and we push and that's in there nicely now just add a little bit of talc and that will allow us to push that sack back on itself and just leave it right on that pellet pusher and push I'm pushing in to that pellet and look at that just as easy as you please now we just put a little bit of silicone oil just around that leading edge and then we twist 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 and keep it from kinking there we go we don't want it to twist there you can feel when it gives there we go just hand tight back it off and that's working very nicely there you can actually see it you can see that pellet inside there too now instead of silicone oil i'm going to put silicone grease on that section this is some silicone grease from Twisby. It has a higher viscosity than the silicone oil, which I just used for lubricant. This is actually silicone oil for oiling the gears, I guess, on a uh, treadmill. Not that I'd know what a treadmill is. And we're ready to fill it up. I hear bubbles that's good so I just keep pumping it until I hear no more bubbles that's what she said <laughs> Michael. Michael. Oh, Michael, please. There he is. Please. and we're ready to write so let's look at some comparisons with other vacuumatics Parker made vacuumatics from 1933 to 1948 and in that 15 year period, they made them in an incredible range from the oversized Maxima to major, standard, junior, deb, and even sub deb sizes. Here is the 1946 Parker Vacuumatic in silver pearl, which is around five and one quarter inches long, with a 1945 Parker Vacuumatic in azure blue pearl, which is about five inches in length. And here's a 1935 first generation double jewel Parker Vacuumatic Lockdown Filler in Burgundy Pearl, which is five and one eighth inches in length. And here is a 1944 Parker Vacuumatic Demi, which is around four and three quarter inches long. And finally, a 1947 Parker 51 Demi Vacuumatic. Let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. You can see the normal shaped section on this blue pearl vacuumatic. 
compared to the one that I had to reshape because of the gouges. In the 1935, the section was slightly more concave and it was in that same pearl celluloid as the rest of the body and cap. And you can see how much shorter the Demi is than the regular sizes. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the restoration. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper and this is a 1946 Parker Vacuumatic in silver pearl and it has a 14 karat gold extra fine flex nib. The nib is as smooth as I can get it, but it has a ton of feedback. Feedback. Being so needle fine, you can hear that feedback on the page. And of course, when it starts so fine, when you flex it, you get incredible amount of line variation and the ink is Waterman's Serenity Blue. This nib makes a 0 0.2 millimeter very fine line which is a western needlepoint or triple XF or a Japanese extra fine on my Richard Bender line width chart which you can find linked in the description below but when flexed you have to do it slowly because it will railroad it makes up to a 0 0.9 millimeter line which is a double broad and for our quote. And for some reverse writing. It's even finer if that's possible. It actually does it. And some quick writing. Now, the feed keeps up when it's writing quickly, but if you flex it, it's going to railroad. Watch, it won't railroad on me now that I've said that, but it does. Look at that. Yeah, the ghost of Shirley. And let's flip over the page and switch to another nib. This flexi nib is awesome for its line variation, but I'm no flex writer, and a needle fine nib is useless to me for regular writing. However, in a previous resurrection that did not go perfectly, I custom ground this 14 karat gold Parker nib into a left oblique stub that is incredible. And you can see that resurrection by clicking right up here. I've been waiting for a black transparent barrel to show up on eBay so I could replace it and make the pen whole again, but they are rare. And this pen section was also mutilated beyond recognition, but I think I did an even better job at restoring this one uh, than this one on the Silver Pearl. So I'm going to swap nib feed and sections between these two pens. Here we go. See if I can do this without getting too inky. Well, the pressure did push out some ink. And this is now a 1946 Parker Vacuumatic with a 14 karat gold left oblique broad stub. And 
I bet you can't hear that because it is so gloriously smooth that you can't hear that nib on the page at all. It's just like butter on a hot plate. And the way this writes now is beyond sublime. So what are my thoughts on this resurrection? I got to tell you folks, this one had me spooked. The way the top jewel turned color was really unexpected. But once I realized the entire pen was already a Franken pen, everything made sense. The mismatched nib and body, the replaced diaphragm, and the tortured and misshapen section all pointed to a pen that had been poorly disassembled and cobbled back together again from parts. The top jewel is an aftermarket part that was incorrectly threaded and jammed onto the top of the pen, so it's now welded there. And that makes sense to me, especially after the black enamel paint came off, and now it's obviously aluminum. Now I don't feel so bad about swapping more parts onto Frank and Shirley, because now it writes like a dream and is a gorgeous silver pearl to add to my collection. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And you can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month. I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you. For watching. And that's all she wrote. this.